Bob Stoker wearing a Stoke track, uh, Stoker wearing a tracksuit, which is certainly unusual. But both he and Don Revy looking so relaxed. Opposed each other in a cup final away back in 1955 when Don, when uh, Don Revy was in the Manchester City side, beaten by Bob Stoker's Newcastle. And now the crowd see. Them. Sunderland have no right to be here. They've beaten Manchester City in one of the previous rounds. They overwhelmed Arsenal in the semi-finals and Leeds United with uh, Billy Bremner there. Know that whatever the forecasters may say, it certainly is going to be easy out there this afternoon for them. Teams will be uh, presented to His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, who is president of the Football Association. comes His Royal Highness with officials from the Football Association. On the right of the picture, Sir Andrew Stephen, the chairman of the Football Association. We had a brief moment of sunshine and now the clouds have gone in, they've come out again, and now the national anthem. United first to be presented to His Royal Highness. Billy Bremner with David Harvey, the uh, goalkeeper, Paul Reaney, and Johnny Giles. Norman Hunter always on the move, jigging around, tremendous competitor. And the rain now beginning to come down heavily here at Wembley said that they thought it might uh, dry up a little bit, although we had uh, the most punishing rain first thing this morning. His Royal Highness and Don Revy, I think, finding it a little uh, difficult to hear each other in this enormous din here at Wembley. And even the rain isn't going to dampen the enthusiasm of the Fantastic Sunday in the fort and supporters. Here's Bobby Curry. <laughs> Richie Pitt being presented. Richie Pitt, of course, who had a spell on loan with Arsenal and then found in a matter of weeks he was helping to uh, knock them out of the FA Cup in the semi-final. 
Sunderland their morale is fantastically high they don't see themselves as underdogs Ron Guthrie the fullback and Ian Porterfield Ian Porterfield was telling me earlier this week when I saw them at a match at Orient on Monday night make no mistake about it we're going to win at Wembley on Saturday this is a firm conviction in their minds Bob Stoko being presented and the crowd enjoyed that moment again for Bob Stoko. Bobby Kerr, the Sunderland skipper, twice he's broken a leg in his career. So you can just imagine what this moment is for Bobby Kerr. Player who runs and runs and runs his Kerr and really is an inspiration of the side by his own example. Bob Stoko wishing him well at the very last. I suppose Bob realises now that all the inspiration that he's been able to give them and all the coaching and all the tactics, now it's down to the players themselves. Well, let's just check up on the players for this 1973 Cup final. Leeds, in fact, are going to uh, follow their usual custom. of giving a salute to the crowd, and it's the first time I've seen that in a Wembley final. Well, a few boos and predictable ones at that from the Sunderland end. So the teams then for the cup final today, Sunderland, Montgomery in goal, Malone, Guthrie, young Mickey Horswell, that destroyer in the middle of the field, and he creates as well, Watson, the big defender, Pitt, Kerr, the captain, Hughes, who was magnificent in the semi-final, Vic Hallam, Ian Porterfield, and Tewart, the man who'll take any penalties that may come Sunderland's way today. The substitute is Young. Leeds, Harvey, Reaney, Cherry, Billy Bremner, Maidley, Norman Hunter, Peter Lorimer, Clark, who scored the winning goal, of course, in the cup final last year, Jones, Giles, Gray, and their substitute, Terry Yorath. Ten full internationals in that Leeds United side. So now we get a toss-up between Bobby Kerr and Billy Bremner. And soon all the speculation will be over. And soon the action will really begin in earnest. Looks as though they're changing over, which means that Leeds United will be defending the goal to our left. The man who scored the first goal for Sunderland against Arsenal, Vic Hallam. Rather a chequered career he's had. He uh, was at Charlton with Bob Stoker, incidentally, when he was manager there. And here's Billy Hughes, the man who scored the other goal for Sunderland. Hallam, who went from Charlton, he went to Orient, he went to Fulham, and he went to Luton without really making a tremendous impact. And now, within a matter of months of joining Sunderland, Vic Hallam is at Wembley. It's a bright yellow ball. And it's going to be Leeds United who get this 1973 Cup final away, the 50th at Wembley Stadium, or the 50th year that it's been here. Ken Burns checking with his two linesmen. No Geordie team has been beaten at Wembley. That will give Sunderland a little measure of hope as we get underway. And Hunter swinging the ball, but it goes straight to Dennis Stewart. And it was blocked by Norman Hunter, but there's Horswell coming in and a slip there by Bobby Kerr, showing straight away the effect of this rain on the pitch. And now Jones taking it up for Leeds United. Watson is there with him, so too is Malone. Giles... Clark, very strong challenge there by Richie Pitt, and it's uh, left Clark flattened and gives Leeds United a free kick in the first half minute of the game. And Les Cocker coming on. That really was a very stern challenge there by Richie Pitt. There's the man who did it.
this was a tackle for me that it, in any normal match I think might have resulted in a name tag. It was really late, no question about it. The kick there with the left foot. Right, a free kick then to Leeds United. The slow motion certainly revealed how late it was with Lorimer the lash. But that was lashed well wide by Peter Lorimer. Scorer of three cup goals uh, for Leeds United this season. Scottish international. And Jim Montgomery. Played six times for England's under-23 years, Montgomery. Sunderland-born and loyal to them through all the thin years. And that's very much to Jim Montgomery's credit. Porterfield jumping for that one with Billy Bremner. Bremner quickest to react to it, though. It's with Maidley. Hughes chasing across to challenge. And Pitt again going in very hard this time on the back of Alan Clark. Dennis Stewart having there to, uh, something to say to referee Ken Burns, but it's uh, unquestionably a free kick for Leeds United. And twice Alan Clark in the first couple of minutes of the game has felt Richie Pitt at his back. Lorimer then with the free kick for Leeds United, deep towards Mick Jones on the far side, lifting himself well, but not quite high enough. And Clark really has uh, felt the thumping tackles of Richie Pitt, and uh, being the sort of man he is, with the sort of form he's in, he might well punish Sunderland for that yet. As it is, a goal kick again for Sunderland. Horswell, but Giles getting there first. Pitt, oh, Pitt and uh, Watson rather getting in each other's way, and uh, Reaney now will take this one out. Throw given to Leeds United, although the Sunderland fans thought that Reaney just got a touch to it, and I would rather agree with them. Not a good ball by Bremner. Straight to Kerr, leaving it now for Hughes. Malone advancing down the right. And now Giles, but that's uh, a foul by Cherry on Billy Hughes. And so it's now a Sunderland free kick. Hughes on his feet. Kerr to take the free kick. The Sunderland roars are beginning to swell from behind that Leeds United goal. Chipped very delicately there towards Watson, who was up. Lorimer. Well, that was a very, very adventurous thing to do and shows tremendous confidence as well. And now it's with Eddie Gray, the first real touch that he's had. Inside for Hunter. Jones meeting it, touching it off nicely there with his head for Gray. Now Pitt, and Jones for a moment was in danger of uh, outstripping Richie Pitt. Guthrie, former Newcastle player, long ball towards Vic Hallam. But Paul Madeley playing number five, not the position he likes most of all, and that was a bad ball by him to Dennis Stewart. Cross deep there towards Billy Hughes. And again, Leeds showing a lot of confidence there, and Kerr couldn't quite get to that one, and now it's Eddie Gray. Kerr back to support Malone. And Malone bringing it away for Sunderland. Off Cherry for a throw to Sunderland. Agonising afternoon for anyone on that bench. Don Revy with his head guarded against the rain that is still coming down. Hunter. Greeny. Brenda. To Reedy. Billy Hughes coming across to cover. It's now with Clark for Leeds. To Bremner. Again a slip there by Porterfield. Lorimer. Porterfield gathering it well though. Good close control there by that uh, tall Scotty and Porterfield for Sunderland. Hallam tried to get Guthrie away who'd gone uh, sprinting forward. It's Cherry now for Leeds. Never before been to Wembley, let alone played there, the Leeds number three. Here's Giles playing in his fifth cup final. But that wasn't a good ball by Giles, who is usually so accurate. And Hallam now to Kerr. Or rather, Tewart. 
Horswell couldn't get his shot in, but he's a possessor of quite a dangerous shot. And Giles now carefully to bring it away. Again, they're looking a little casual, a little slack, Leeds United. And it's so unlike them. Guthrie, the long ball towards Vic Hallam again, and a bit of jostling there between Hunter and Hallam. And now Giles. Maidley. Well stopped there by Malone. Stewart. Porterfield. Hughes begging for the ball on this left touchline. Now he's got it. Bremner running off him. And Reaney is there too. That's a good little run by Stewart and it didn't quite come off for some of them. Giles to Hunter. The pitch really very, very damp, and I suppose at the moment the players finding it a little difficult to keep their feet and also a little difficult measuring their passes. Occasionally there are a little spurts of water which are holding the ball. Watson in very quickly and intercepting well there for Sunderland. Porterfield. Sunderland at the moment with a lot of men massed in defence, obviously determined to keep their morale and confidence high by not conceding an early goal. Good challenge back there by Johnny Giles. Sunderland's throw, Porterfield with it, to Horsville. And Maidley changing direction fairly quickly, back carefully to Harvey. Eight minutes now gone, still uh, no score. Giles. Sweeping pass, that's much more like Johnny Giles, and a nice nod off there for Lorimer by Rainey, and a long cross towards Vic Jones, and a fist away, as Jones advanced very dangerously indeed there for Leeds United, a good fist away by Montgomery, it's with Giles now. Cherry couldn't keep it in, although really he should have done. Jimmy, how do you think the pitch is playing? Well, it's not easy, and as I expected, when you see players like Johnny Giles mispassing on what a simple pass is for him, you can realise, I think, that it is upsetting the play just a little bit at the start, and they're trying to find their feet and, and stay up. But it won't take them long. It'll take them another five or ten minutes before they really feel the pace. Well, happily, the rain has eased off. The sun is beginning to come out. Leeds United get a free kick away on that uh, left touch line. It's with Eddie Gray, a very short free kick indeed. Gray showing a lot of skills down that left touchline. Onto the right foot, blocked by a horse wheel. And now Porterfield for Sunderland. A challenge from behind by Billy Bremner. Bringing boos from the Sunderland crowd, but spotted by the referee and the linesman simultaneously. Dick Malone. At Paul raw bone Scott came from Air United. Hallam leaping for that one and given a surprising amount of room. Jones and Clark are up. And another nudge in the back by Richie Pitt on Alan Clark. Certainly it's been uh, Pitt's job, I would have thought, to be told, stick close to Alan Clark, give him no room at all, and there they are again. It's a free kick to Leeds. It's with Lorena. Towards Jones again, another long slanting cross. Jones really hasn't been able to make much contact with them yet, but every time they've looked a little bit dangerous, though he might get away from uh, the defenders. That's a good piece of play there by Kerr, and he's found Horsewell. And Hurst, Horsewell pull back. And Sunderland, instead of mounting what could have been a very promising attack, pulled back by referee Ken Burns. And Sunderland getting a free kick instead. Malone with it. Allen there well before Hunter that time. Hughes to Horsewell. And now Porterfield. And now Guthrie. 
trying to dummy his way, but uh, Lorimer and Rini really pushing him out all the time. So the player still taking a little time to get the feel of this pitch. David Harvey, who kept Gary Sprake out of the uh, Cup final side last season, in fact played in the Cup final replay in 1970. There's Mick Jones. Watson leaping for that one. And Kerr, such a small man, was uh, out jumped by Eddie Gray. And at that time it was Malone going in on the back of Jones. I think possibly the pitch is contributing something to these uh, tackles as well, Jimmy, isn't it? Yes, it could be, but uh, the early one there by Richie Pitt, there was no doubt about that. He meant to go in and uh, let Clark know that he was going to be close with him all the afternoon. Kerr now to Hallam. Hallam's got away from maybe there, all right. And he's got Porterfield down the left. Stewart inside, calling for it from Porterfield. Hallam slips over, and a great shot there by Billy Hughes. Took it well on the run, and was just a couple of yards too high. So Harvey with another goal kick for Leeds. Clark, good header there by Clark. Giles and played first time by Giles, nicely into the path of Mick Jones. But again, Watson tackling well and tackling fairly, but it's with the Clark. A touch off this time for Johnny Giles. And that was a charge down. Reaney whacking it in there again. Horsewell losing control. Clark almost with a shot as the red and white striped shirts hurled themselves at Alan Clark. And Hunter going through the tackle now. And it's Little Kerr again setting the right example to his team. But Kerr must have thought that was going over and the long leg of uh, Norman Hunter just flicked it across. But it's a goal kick. But Kerr again, I think, showing us all why he's the captain of Sunderland. Chasing and running and doing more chasing. Keeping his men moving. And so Jim Montgomery joined Sunderland from school, now 29 years old. Porterfield coming for that one. Again, Hughes has made a burst down the left for him. It's taken the pressure off Stewart, and he couldn't quite find Hughes with it. But that's how Sunderland are fighting for this ball. Billy Hughes. Sunderland's throw. Coming up to a quarter of an hour gone, and absolutely nothing to choose but the inside so far. Guthrie again. Rini nodding that one away, but only as far as Horsewell! Oh, and that was a fraction wide! There was a deflection after Horsewell had hit it. Tremendous shot, perhaps the first real chance of the game. It wasn't blocked, that one, and it was just as you see, a yard past that post. He's very accurate from that position, that young man. Harvey then with a the kick. Watson stretching just a little too far. And maybe it was uh, it would have been much fairer to Leeds United if uh, referee Ken Burns had played the advantage there because Jones was really on his way. Watson, who's uh, been a striker as well as a central defender, in fact, has uh, scored four goals in the cup this season for Sunderland. There's Giles though with the free kick. Clark nodding it on. Bremner is right up there once more with Horswell watching him, but it's Guthrie who gets it away. Hunter's header. And uh, Watson's, and now Mabley. Everybody well inside that Sunderland half now, bar the uh, goalkeeper Harvey. Porterfield, Stewart, and Horsewell struggling to get to that one. He was determined to get it. Stewart to Hallam. And now to Malone. And now to Kerr. Hallam has gone on a run, and Hunter is covering it, and Harvey is out. Giles to Lorimer, Kerr again, Giles, this time it's Trevor Cherry, and again it's little uh, Bobby Kerr, Malone very nearly lost it for Sunderland, Giles, 
Clark and Guthrie meeting it at the same time, and uh, Guthrie's momentum took it through him, and now it's with uh, Vic Hallam. Well, the horse will ride in the way there, but again, an example certainly of Sunderland enthusiasm, but referee Ken Burns saying that uh, Hallam's feet were a little high. Bremner. Reaney making the break, a beautiful ball inside the fullback, and Guthrie had spotted it. And a foul on uh, Paul Reaney by Ron Guthrie gives Leeds another free kick. It'll be another slanting cross, I'm sure, towards Mick Jones. Porterfield and Guthrie are both there in the two-man Sunderland wall. Bremner with the kick. Too high for Jones, but not for Kerr. Giles spreading it wide again, beautifully. Bremner once more, again the slanting cross, and again Montgomery is there, this time with his fist. Cherry knocking it back again. Clark, is this the chance? No, it's not, because Watson was there. Porterfield slipping, but Watson saved what surely was a certain goal there, because Clark was lining it up, and when Clark lines it up from that range, that usually means just one thing. Giles now. Hunter. Cherry. Sunderland at the moment a little bit back on their heels. But there's Malone. And he's found Hallam. And there's a good sweeping ball this time for Tewart if he can make it. Hunter to Gray. Giles. Always aware of where men are, and he just looked up in time to see Lorimer and found him so accurately. Lorimer with another Giles-like cross this time to Eddie Gray, taking on Malone and sweeping past the Sunderland fullback, but it's a goal kick. A few worry lines I would have thought on Bob Stoko's face. The uh, leads beginning to spray it around a bit now. In the centre there, the man in the trophy. Montgomery with the kick. Lorimer. A long ball, looking out the speed of Mick Jones, but again, uh, Jim Montgomery is there. Horswell. Cherry. To Hunter. Pitt. Yes, Giles uh, in the centre of a sandwich made by uh, Horswell and Hallam. Hughes to Guthrie. Bremner chasing him. Guthrie holding him off. All the power of that running there. And maybe going in. And in fact... Maybe played that ball and the uh, whistle has gone. That didn't look a foul to me in any case. Jimmy? No, I wouldn't have said so, but I think the referee is being careful at this stage of the game. I think Maidley definitely gets the ball here. He's across it, but he does make contact with the ball, but uh, you can see that without any doubt he's uh, winded from that position because they clash very strongly there. Not easy for a referee under these conditions to decide uh, what is really dangerous and what isn't because the players are bound to slip and clash here and there. But he's given a free kick to Sunderland. Number 10, Ian Porterfield's going to take it. Callum and Tewart are on the far side. Big Dave Watson's up there too. And that's where it's aimed for. And it's Maidley getting it away. But only as far as Billy Hughes. Clark showing a lot of fight there for the ball. And bringing down Hughes. Free kick again. And the referee is reaching for the book. And it looks as though Alan Clark... Well, maybe that was a little tough. Clark who was the victim of a terrible tackle by Pitt in the very first minute of the game where a name wasn't taken. But now Clark finds his name going into the book with 21 minutes of the game gone. 
and it's another free kick for Sunderland. Watson, Tewart, Hallam again, lying deep. Hughes going to join them. Hallam right up there, but uh, again couldn't reach it. Hunter just keeping the ball in play. And a throw given to uh, Leeds United. And after 20 minutes, as it is here, nil-nil, it's also 20 minutes up at Hampden Park on, and no score in the Scottish Cup final between Rangers and Celtic. Lorimer hit first time with a lot of hope, but without really the necessary direction. Vic Hallam, Sunderland who beat Notts County, Reading, Manchester City, Luton and Arsenal on their way. Leeds who beat Norwich, Plymouth, West Bromwich Albion, Derby and Wolves. Bremner. Maidley. Finding Lorimer. Horsworth. Stewart, good ball there from Horsville and almost a very good one back from Stewart and that was a strong challenge by Hunter on Dennis Stewart. And the train is coming on. It's a free kick then to be taken by Malone for Sunderland. Bremner and the rest of the Leeds United defence are facing it. It's a deep one there towards Watson who'd gone right up and a good catch by Harvey under pressure. Hunter getting the boost of the Sunderland crowd for that challenge on Tewart of just a moment ago. Gray with the throw for Leeds. Giles squirming free, but only as free as Kerr would allow him, and now it's with Hallam. Again, it's Kerr making the challenge on Gray. Horswell, Porterfield. Horsewell again. First time ball there. And it's with Tewart. This time Giles picking up the loose one. The long searching ball again. Again trying to pick out the speed of either Lorimer or Jones. But Richie Pitt it was who was there that time. And now it's Guthrie for Sunderland. That's a fair looking ball as well. And Hughes making it a very good one. And the cross wouldn't come over as Hughes wanted it. He delayed it for a moment and Reaney was able to just get in a tackle. Or at least half a tackle. Hunter, what tremendous confidence there all along the penalty area, past three Sunderland players by Norman Hunter. Gray finding Bremner. Shielding that ball from Porterfield. And getting rather angry with Porterfield as well, but play on, says the referee. Bremner a little bit ruffled there by the uh, big Scott from Sunderland. And it's Johnny Giles now for Leeds. Across again towards Alan Clark, and it's uh, Malone touching it behind. And so it's a corner for Leeds, and uh, Jim Montgomery saying that the Leeds player was going in on the back of Malone. Paul Maidley, the number five coming up. Jones is there, Clark too, even Cherry's up. And Billy Bremner, who scored so many vital goals for Leeds. Maidley jumping for it. Oh, and Cherry almost got a touch to it, too. Another corner. Again, Peter Lorimer taking it. Again, those same defenders have stayed up. At that time, Kerr gets it away. Only as far as Lorimer. 
cross again there, and again when the, whenever he's in any doubt at all, Montgomery is using those fists to such very good advantage. He won't risk catching a slippery ball like this. They're skidding off the turf for another goal kick to Sunderland. Just over 25 minutes gone. And Billy Hughes and Sunderland still holding Leeds United to nil-nil. Away the lads is coming from the Sunderland end now as Montgomery takes that goal kick. Porterfield, Guthrie, Hughes, good ball. Guthrie again. Taken by Bremner, free kick to Sunderland. Again, I would have thought the lead skipper played that ball. But it's another free kick. And Hughes now looking for the right sort of shooting angle and indeed getting the shot in, but a goal kick to Leeds. And Celtic have gone ahead in the uh, game at Hampden Park, the Scottish Cup final after 24 minutes. Celtic won, Rangers nil. Kenny Dalgleish, the scorer for Celtic. Still nil-nil here. And David Harvey with a goal kick for Leeds. Watson getting a bit of a push as he uh, leapt there from Mick Jones. Off Cherry, Sunderland's throw. Bobby Kerr with the throw. Hallam, not seen too much of him so far. Hunter. Lorimer played for Reini. Man who missed the cup final three years ago with a broken leg. Here he is again, Paul Reini, number two. Pitt going in with great determination to head that one away. Lorimer. Gray, a little knot of three Leeds United players in that Sunderland penalty area now. Clark Jones and Bremner. <laughs> Kerr, nice little touch again there by uh, Bobby Kerr, and now it's with Billy Hughes. Good challenge back there by Eddie Gray. Hughes, I think, is in a little bit of trouble. He had his hands on his uh, haunches just now and uh, was obviously feeling a knock that he's got. And that really is a disastrous-looking sign for Sunderland. Kerr, Hughes trying valiantly to flick that on, but he's almost immobile now. And Madeley now to Rini. Giles, a lot of space ahead for Giles. Good, decisive defensive play again by Watson and Hughes moving perhaps just a fraction easier. Giles, a long sweeping ball again towards Alan Clark. Malone challenging hard, Bremner a touch off for Lorimer now. Is this Lorimer's chance? This must be Lorimer's chance. Crossed there towards Mick Jones. Oh, and a beautiful header away by Malone. Crossed again and passed. Well, that was uh, Dick Malone after Clark had gone in there and it looked as though it was almost a free header. Big Dick Malone, there he is. In fact, some of our panellists last night thought he might be a weak member of their Sunderland defence, but he was superb there. We can see now just the end of that movement, but it really was a brave header by Malone, doing very well on that touchline, aided by Bobby Kerr. Not a weakness at all. Hughes, moving just a little easier now. And now it's with Kerr. And that must be Harvey's, but he's under a lot of pressure. So Harvey tipping that one over. A corner to Sunderland. And Hughes is going to take it. He really is, I'm sure, to the vast relief of the northeast, moving a lot more freely now. A 
deep one again. Watson is right in there. So too is Hallam. And Porterfield! Oh, Porterfield has scored! And Sunderland, the underdogs, are in the lead. Ian Porterfield, the first goal he scored in the Cup this season, and he waits for Wembley to do it. Well, there it's coming over now, and remember that Porterfield is a left-footed player, a naturally left-footed player. He's got a lot of room there, and it's a right-foot volley, and he keeps it down beautifully. So easy to have slashed it over the bar, but kept down so well. So that really does open up the 1973 final. Ian Porterfield, a tall stop that they got from Wraith Rovers. Really has become the hero now. A beautifully struck goal. And leads now with work to do. Greeny. And put behind by Guthrie. Bob Stokos showing very little emotion. Knows that there may be even more to lose now. But better to be a goal up. Here's Lorimer. Horswell getting that one away. Greeny for Giles. And Tewitt right back there, bravely cutting the ball out before he gets to Lorimer. The long pass. And who is on the end of it? Kerr. Now with Hallam. Strong challenge there between those two red-haired midfield players, Bremner and Horswell. And Bremner being spoken to by the referee. Can't see whether it's a name take. No, it's not a name take. But Bremner very unhappy with the situation at the moment. And Watson with a Sunderland side that hardly can believe what's happened to them. Towards Hughes, and the cries from behind that Leeds United goal where the Sunderland supporters are, are ringing around Wembley. Hunter. Bremner leads a side of vast experience, but that really would have jolted them. Giles. John Revy with a problem or two. And look at them. After all the thin years with so little success that Sunderland have had, how can you deny them an afternoon like this? Horswell getting it away again. Hughes is going after it, but Reaney and Maidley between them. And the atmosphere here at Wembley now is really as it should be on a cup final occasion. Quite electric. Cherry just keeping it in, and Pitt back for Montgomery. Just over ten minutes to go to half-time, and so far the unbelievable is happening, that Sunderland, 250-1 to one outsiders when the, the Cup started away back in January, leading in the final against one of the finest teams in Europe, Leeds United. Porterfield, the man who scored the goal, sending Tuart down the wing, but Leeds getting the throw. Giles delaying it and Hallam getting in quickly. Hunter. Lorimer. Giles. Porterfield. The water really splashing up around Ian Porterfield on that uh, touchline. And a goal kick to Sunderland. That's the man who scored it. And incidentally, one more statistic. It's 35 years since a team wearing stripes at Wembley has been beaten. That was Huddersfield in 1938. There were some red and white straps up on those terraces this afternoon. Clark's feet a little too high, said the referee. Very nearly had a sensation there, though. Hughes, Maidley finding it difficult to turn, and uh, there was obstruction on Billy Hughes by Paul Maidley. So Bobby Kerr again with the free kick for Sunderland. And uh, Hughes almost got to it. 
Waterfield nodding it back again. Stewart jumping but mainly beating him. Jones right back to help out. Horswell delicately forward again. Chase that one, he says, and that's just what Hallam's doing. Unsettling Hunter on the way. Pitt leaping for it and winning a lot of good balls in the air this afternoon, Richie Pitt. Leeds United's throw. Bremner wanting to get on with it quickly. With Billy Bremner now. And a throw to Sunderland. So there he is, the hero, Ian Porterfield with another throw for Sunderland. Stewart jumping, but really without too much hope of getting it. Maybe the simplest of jobs back to David Harvey. Another good jump by Watson. Off the referee. And it was well for, for Sunderland that it did because it fell to Hallam. And now with Horsler. Porterfield. Being snapped up by Bremner, but Bremner slips and then gets it from Giles. Another long ball there again, well cut out by Watson, playing superbly these uh, two big central defenders for Sunderland, Watson and Pitt. A nice one too there between Stewart and Hughes, and Hughes is away again, and that's a good cross! Sunderland's throw. Horswell in a bit of trouble there by the touchline. Here's that Hughes again, broken through to the line. You can see the cross beating Harvey's hand, but going too fast and too high for anybody connected. It. It's very interesting the way Sunderland has developed their tactics in this game because Kerr, I think, has tied up Eddie Gray. We haven't seen very much of Eddie Gray, and you can see on that line over there that he's denying in space, and Gray's only had flashes in which to get into the game. And it's an interesting battle in the middle of the field between... Porterfield and Horswell, who are really looking stronger on this heavy ground, maybe than Giles and Bremner. It's the canny elder players against the younger strong ones. And at the moment, it's the young strong ones that I feel are on top. Bremner has become irritated a little bit because he can't get the space he needs to dictate. And there have been two or three clashes between him and Horswell. But it's a fascinating tactical battle, and the Sunderland are by no means losing it. Guthrie then with a the throw for Sunderland. As Horsfield is all right again. Stewart, a little touch off again. Nicely there for Guthrie, but that's a little too hard and a little too high. And we hear from Hampden Park, the Rangers have now equalised. Celtic won, Rangers won. Remember, Kenny Dalgleish had scored for Celtic. Derek Parlane has now equalised for Rangers. And here, it's Ian Porterfield's goal that gives Sunderland the 1-0 lead against Leeds United with five minutes now to go to half-time. Again, a very good jump by... Uh, Watson, Horswell to Hughes. But Cherry watched him all the way, put it into touch, and it's a throw again to Sunderland. Trevor Cherry, who came from Huddersfield. Stewart. Oh, what a nice little flick by Stewart. And a little one there by Hughes. You can see how their confidence is growing. And that was a good cross by Kerr. And it's falling for Porterfield again. He touched it off first time. And Horsewheel a shade too high. But a beautiful example here of how Sunderland, since they've scored that goal and know that they're getting to grips with Leeds United, are beginning to turn it on. And here's the confidence coming up now. But that final shot, high, wide and handsome. But really, it was the two little flicks before that that showed it best of all. Oh, that was a bad push in the back by Rini. That really was a bad push in the back by Rini. And really, that was a deliberate one. On Dennis Stewart.
So Sunderland might properly get a free kick. Richie Pitt. Towards Hallam, but flicked on by Hughes. Bremner getting it away. And now it's with Clark. Hunter. Gray. Malone. Good control again by Dick Malone. Certainly showing no weakness at all on that uh, right flank for Sunderland. Another throw to Sunderland. Hughes leaving it for Bobby Kerr. And he has to it. But Hunter stuck close to him, and Hunter won in the end. Giles. Torini. And will that carry? Yes, it will. Pitts header and Porterfield. And now Horsley. Hughes. And that's another Sunderland throw. Coming off Mick Jones. So Bobby Kerr to Billy Hughes. Gray. Again, taking far too long to decide what he wanted to do with it. That was a bit quicker and the ball stood in play. But it's Watson for Sunderland. To Horsworth. Bremner was closing very quickly, but not quickly enough. But Cherry taking possession and finding Maidley. And there's room ahead now for Maidley to begin one of those runs. Rini away on the right for him. But here's Clark in a lot of space. And Clark denied at the very last by Dave Watson. That looked as though it became almost a formality. Well, they were caught out there by the Maidley ball. It went straight to his target, like an arrow there, and gave Clark all that space. But he just was denied a final clear shot. So a corner to Leeds, Peter Lorimer with it. Bremner right in there again, it's the fist of Montgomery. He really has used them well. Lorimer again, that's a good-looking cross as well. Madeley going in, but not enough power, and Sunderland scramble it away. Madeley once more, turned back towards Clark. And Tewart there, now Lorimer! And again, Montgomery gets in the way of it. And Sunderland were all over the place for a moment there, and it nearly came back to uh, Lorimer. They still haven't got it away properly, but it's at least a Sunderland throw. Porterfield with it. And Jim Montgomery in that Sunderland goal has used his fist so well, got his body beautifully behind that shot from Lorimer as well. Well, he might have more to face now, because there's Maidley planting one through, but again, the tall Malone. Clark, Cherry, Leeds mounting attack after attack now as we come right to the last minutes of this uh, first half. And now Porterfield on the break again for Sunderland. Played again through for Billy Hughes, and now it'll come for Porterfield again. Just keeping it there. Hughes going in and Harvey getting it, losing it and getting it again. Giving a dig to Vic Hallam there on the, uh, in the process. And Leeds occasionally, you can show it and see it in their faces, just showing a little bit of anxiety, just a little bit rattled at the moment. But here's Giles, a man who can cool them down. And finding Clark. Back for Norman Hunter. Charged down though again by Watson. What a tremendous game Watson's having going. Behind Hunter. Didn't make contact with him. And away we go now with Kerr, but he showed far too much of that to Cherry. The final really opening out now, with both sides doing a lot of attacking. Playing injury time now at the end of the first half, as it comes through now to Johnny Giles. But uh, that's well wide. 
and Sunderland have been so good in defence, the way they've come out so quickly to challenge men in uh, possession. As we see now with uh, nearly about a minute and a half of uh, injury time gone, Sunderland are leading by 1-0. Referee Ken Burns having another look at that stopwatch. And Montgomery again with the kick for Sunderland. Hughes. Well, he couldn't slip Rini, but Rini was clattering into him, and so it's another free kick to Sunderland. Billy Hughes, who's shown some beautiful touches this afternoon at Wembley. And now seems really to have recovered completely from that uh, knock that he had earlier on that had him limping. Kerr with the free kick, played strangely there, straight to Harvey. As the whistle goes for half-time, a really sensational first half that saw Sunderland struggling for periods, but scoring the only goal of the first half through Ian Porterfield. Well, as I say, just before half-time, it really looks as though it's beginning to open up. There's Bob Stoker onto the field now to congratulate Porterfield and already starting the instructions that will carry on down in that dressing room. A really surprising first half then, and I think that the way things were going, we might well have a magnificent second half as well.
and welcome back then to Wembley for the second half of this cup final. You join us just as you can see now, the Leeds United players, I would have thought a little anxious about the way things have gone and the way things may go. And they are walking out. Sunderland, buoyant and hopeful and confident, as you can see, are running out. Maybe there's a little lesson there as well. At any rate, uh, Jim Montgomery, who'd had a magnificent first half, fisting the ball away, would never risk catching the tricky ball, made one or two very, very good saves indeed for Sunderland to keep their hopes alive. Reminding you then of this extraordinary half-time score, if you uh, listen to forecasters, Leeds United nil, Sunderland one, Ian Porterfield the score. Sunderland will now be defending. There's big Dave Watson on the left. What a tremendous game he'd had, as you heard Johan Cruyff say, that it's uh, Watson who has been absolutely magnificent in defence, along with Richie Pitt. Jimmy, a word from you. Well, I feel among the uh, general opinion of the panel that... Uh, Bob Stoker has won the tactical battle of the first half in that the two central defenders have really locked up Clark and Jones and played exceptionally well. Kerr on the right, the skipper by dropping back has stifled out Gray. And even Montgomery has adopted the right tactics for the day. When he's been under pressure, he's punched rather than caught. Simple, logical football, common sense. But that's the way Sunderland have played it and they've reaped the reward they've got of one goal. But here comes the second half. Let's wait and see whether simple, logical, common-sense football can win the cup against all the odds for Sunderland here this afternoon. There's Hunter to Horswell, and now it's with Hughes. Horswell again. Towards Hallam, struggling and straining to get that ball. It's with Billy Hughes once more, trying to touch it through for Porterfield. But Reaney, not a very good clearance, straight to Horswell again. Hughes. Touch forward again for Tewart. Madeley nicely in control for Leeds United, finding Gray and now finding Bremner, who really has got to begin to find the fire and the experience now to dominate the middle of the field for Leeds United, which he's failed to do so far. Clark, a good ball there for Rini, who's on the overlap, and we saw very few of those from him in the first half. He's got past Pitt, and now it's with Clark. But there's that man, Watson, again. Clark to Madeley. And now for Bremner. Clark. Giles. And away comes Sunderland with Porterfield. Stewart. A little jink forward there for Kerr. And he's beautifully rounded Norman Hunter. Turned back for Stewart. And he's got past Hunter as well. There goes Kerr again. But no foul there against Trevor Cherry. Giles to Hunter. Long time since I've seen two players go past Norman Hunter in the space of something like 15 seconds. But there's Madeley. That time he's uh, poked it out to the right to find Rainey, but a good interception there again by Richie Pitt for Sunderland. He and Watson have really been truly outstanding in that defence for Sunderland, along with goalkeeper Jim Montgomery. Now it's with Lorimer. There's a good cross again. Oh, and that's the first time that uh, Montgomery has made any sort of mistake at all. He just got a hand to it. Cherry, deep again towards Clark, but Pitt again winning a valuable ball in the air. Horswell harassing Giles, but now it's with Maidley. Bremner, and Bremner onto the left foot, oh, and Montgomery missed that one, and Malone did exactly the right thing. They are the sort of uh, bounces off a goalkeeper's chest where you expect to find uh, Alan Clark, but the number two, Dick Malone, carefully putting it behind for the corner. Malone at this uh, post nearest to us, Guthrie at the far one, Jones getting ahead to it, goal kick to Sunderland. Well, that's a couple of little fleeting errors there by uh, Jim Montgomery at the start of his second half. He was faultless in the first half, but he's uh, misjudged one cross and allowed a shot to bounce off his chest.
but it certainly isn't the best of days for goalkeepers with a, a pitch that is uh, very wet with the ball always skidding off it touch of rain in the air as well Lorimer now for Leeds Hunter Maidley coming forward a lot now in this uh, second half is Rini but he cuts it straight at uh, Guthrie Allum's header turned nicely for Tewart and Tewart again what beautiful skills there by the son of the number 11 Dennis Tewart it's now with Billy Hughes and of course alongside him is Bobby Kerr there's Bobby Kerr all the running in the world and it took Bremner to cut that one out Hunter Cherry surrounded by uh, Sunderland players but finds Hunter Giles Maidley Lorimer a lot of space there for Lorimer but again Watson was there Bremner to Giles a lot of space on the left now for Gray and Leeds look hungry for a goal it's with Giles and now it'll be with Gray they're really putting a, a lot of pressure on Sunderland now Guthrie two full backs have played well we've said a lot about the central uh, defenders but certainly Malone and Guthrie have uh, let very few players pass them an infringement over on the far side giving uh, Leeds United a free kick here's uh, Ron Guthrie and it'll be Billy Bremner who'll take the free kick. Bremner now lining up this free kick for Leeds. They're all going in on... Uh, that was Clark, and the ball is in the back of the net, but there obviously was an infringement put there by Cherry, and Clark was quite clearly running at the goalkeeper and not the ball. Disappointment for Leeds, but the right decision coming up now you can see that he already had the ball in his hands before in fact he was challenged and out it came there's the ball clearly there and the Clark's elbow goes in and that's what pushes him over and knocks the ball out so a free kick for Sunderland who are still leading by a golden hill Guthrie beaten in the air then by Jones Tewart for Sunderland and Gray just getting there before Kerr, but Hallam now comes on the scene, taken down by Hunter. That, in fact, I don't think was a malicious tackle, it was a badly timed one. So Malone with the free kick for Sunderland. Watson has come up on the far side, score of uh, plenty of surprise goals for Sunderland in the past. Malone aiming a deep one towards Watson, it's, uh, in fact, Hallam who got the head to it. Celtic 1, Rangers 2 now. Alfie Conn, the scorer of the second goal for Rangers. Here, still Sunderland leading by a golden hill, with just about six and a half minutes of the second half gone. Guthrie. A throw to uh, Leeds United. Well, I suppose they're a little heartened by the extra effort that Leeds United seem to have put into things at the start of the second half. They've uh, begun to pressurise this Sunderland defence. Here's Maybe The defenders are coming forward more and more, and a good inter interception there by Horsfield. Greeny, and now it's with Hunter. Some at that moment surrendering the middle of the field to Norman Hunter. Now with Lorimer. Jimmy, do you get the impression that Leeds are piling a few more defenders forward, like Maidley and Reeney? Yes, I think they have to, because Jackie Charlton felt they hadn't played in the first half. It wasn't that they played bad, they hadn't really got into the game and, and saw what they could do. But now it's Porterfield for Sunderland. Horsewell. Porterfield. Stewart's made the run inside, but uh, he really had little chance of getting that one.
Malone, Pitt, Porterfield. Only Hughes is up, and Hughes got in there before Hunter. Norman Hunter again. There we go for Porterfield. Horswell up there. Porterfield. Across again towards Hallam. And now it's with Eddie Gray. Cherry took a knock there in that goal mouth, jumping for it with uh, Hallam and uh, Harvey. Clark letting that one run, and Malone didn't really make a sufficient contact, but there's Watson again, and at the moment there seems no way past this big man. Malone for Sunderland. Stewart. And now it's with the Hughes. And Bremner there, but it goes straight to Hughes again, and now he does get it through to Stewart. And now it's with Horsfield, and over on the right, completely unmarked, is Kerr, but... Uh, Horswell decided to go it his own way. Didn't really catch it. The youngster there, Mickey Horswell, having his first full season for Sunderland. Jones, Pitt, Porterfield. And he's got past Bremner. But he's got to come back because there's a foul given against Billy Bremner. Several of these Sunderland players showing a lot of skill in the way that they're skipping past the challenges of Leeds United defenders. But very often frightened first division players, but uh, Hughes has certainly done it once or twice, Kerr has done it once or twice, and Porterfield Hill certainly skipped past Billy Bremner then. Watson, that magnificent defender with a magnificent free kick. And now Hughes, will he do something with this one? Oh, Stewart, let one go there. Porterfield again, that time with the left foot. Guthrie lining one up. And it just went into the side netting when half the crowd at Wembley thought it was number two. What a moment from behind the goal. Look at that. One shot after the other. And finally, there it is, just into the side netting. So it's still 1-0 to Sunderland. And now Leeds are coming for them again with Peter Lorimer. And now with Bremner with a lot of space now, with a transfer of shot, brought down, no penalty given. The referee won't even listen and look. Decided that Bremner made far too much of it. Porterfield challenging hard there with Giles. There's so much spirit in this Sunderland side. Horsewell going in hard, and Cherry turning it back to Harvey. And now Celtic have got level at 2-2 with a penalty. From Connolly, Scotland's player of the year. So they're having a tremendous amount of action up at Hampden Park. We're having a great cup final here at Wembley with the underdog Sunderland still leading by one goal to nil. And the referee going across now to have a word with Rini for that challenge. But no more than a word. With 12 minutes of the second half gone. And I would think now that, although the Leeds fans were prepared to allow Sunderland that goal in the first half, I would have thought now they're beginning to worry just a little bit because time is creeping on and there's very little evidence at the moment of Leeds United getting an equaliser. And there's almost another chance here for Sunderland. Here's Horswell, and that one is wide as well, and the shooting at the moment is coming not from Leeds but from Sunderland. Leeds powering forward again, though, with Norman Hunter. But so many reserves to call on in terms of experience. Bremner, a good ball there to Rini. And it really would still need just one mistake in that Sunderland defence to open it up again. Here's Bremner. Giles, Sunderland really living on a knife edge now. And there's the fist once more of Jim Montgomery getting it away to Horsewell. His punching has been superb, Jimmy. Yes, it's a sensible thing to do under the circumstances because those lead strikers go in hard under those circumstances. It only needs one drop and it can be a tapping goal. 
Throw to Leeds United. Billy Bremner taking it. Just over half an hour to go. And a goal kick. And Don Revy will know, as well as you know, that there is about a half an hour left. You can be sure that he's been looking at his watch every half minute. The lead substitutes and reserves, and the Sunderland bench, and can that miracle man in the, in, in the middle there, Bob Stoko, pull off another miracle. Hallam, Pitt, and Hughes is herring after this one. Madeley can only nod it down to Guthrie, and it's wide. But still, the shooting is coming from Sunderland. Giles, well, that went straight to Hallam, but Hallam, well, his strength kept that one for him against Norman Hunter. It's with Mickey Horswell. And now with Hughes. Sunderland's throw. Allen right in there waiting for any sort of cross or any sort of chance that might come. Tewart tussling with Maidley. Another throw to Sunderland and once more it's Ian Porterfield. Maidley getting it away, but only as far as Guthrie. And that's a shot, and it's again just wide. And Leeds clearly are worried now by Sunderland. Their substitute, uh, Terry Yorath. There it comes up now again. One more shot, and one more just a yard or two wide of that post. As I was saying, the substitute, Terry Yorath for Leeds, beginning to warm up on the far side. Hughes and Porterfield, and he's gone past Maidley. But... Uh, Hunter there, four leads. Guthrie. Exactly half an hour left now. Giles to Maidley. That's the score then. Porterfield the scorer in the first half for Sunderland. And now Hughes. Guthrie. Oh, and that's a difficult back pass there. Jones was going in. But in fact, a goal kick is given. And that back pass, I think it was from Guthrie, could easily have been intercepted by this fellow, uh, Mick Jones. Interesting point, in fact, that uh, Jimmy Hill just made, that Yorath has now gone to sit down again with the substitutes. It might have just have been a psychological G-up for the rest of the Leeds United players to let him know, let them know that maybe Yorath will come on and one of them will have to go off. Watson again winning a good ball in the air and then hoofing it away, right-footed there towards Billy Hughes. Maidley. Hunter. Giles. Maidley again. Long stride of his. Lorimer hit first time into the side netting. No goal. That's a couple of three times that Maidley has come uh, looking forward. In the first half he did it and good accurate passing. And it catches them out again here. One through ball on the run. A first time shot from Lorimer into that side netting. But this is one way in which Leeds can bring themselves back into the game by putting more pressure on by extra men coming up from behind. Maidley to Lorimer. A long cross again there. Watson obviously heard the shout from Montgomery. Ducked underneath it. Hallam versus Maidley. Maidley's head. But now Porterfield in there. 
Madeley to Cherry. Oh, and he very nearly lost that to Kerr, but it's still Cherry. Not a good ball, though. Watson was in, and Tewart just keeping it in, and Leeds getting a throw. Hunter. Giles. Gray. Oh, Porterfield only half got that out of the way, and Malone was playing almost in a central defensive position with uh, Pitt and Watson. And here's Malone again. And Hallam is offside. Celtic 2, Rangers 3 now, the latest score from Hampden Park. For Scythe, the scorer of the third goal for Rangers. Hunter now to Giles and now for Jones can he turn it and let one go back this time for Reaney as Sunderland crowd them out Reaney the high one in and Cherry going in and a great save and a goal no my goodness I thought Lorimer have got that one and Leeds are trying to say that the ball had crossed the line well we better look at it now because this is very vital I must say it looked as if the ball had hit the staunchion at the back let's look closely Underneath the bar and out. That's the verdict. No so goal. Madeley pumps it in again. No goal. And the linesman and referee were right. A layoff that time, which goes straight to Madeley. And now for Giles. And now for Clark. Jones is there. That really will quicken it for Leeds. Gray. And now Cherry. Gray. And Sunderland again deny them a clear shot by crowding them out. It is Guthrie now who leads the way. Porterfield. What a tremendous moment that was. Hughes. Porterfield. Horsewell. Malone. Kerr. And now Horsewell again. Oh, and he's gone past Hunter once more. The linesman was flagging. And the referee whistling. Pulling the game back. Tewart. He's down, but I don't think badly hurt. A free kick to Sunderland. We can look at it now from behind the goal. As it turns out to be an incredible miss. There it is, Lorimer coming in. Oh, in fact, it wasn't. What a save. In fact, that was a fantastic save from Montgomery. Right, a free kick now to Sunderland. Bobby Kerr with it. And uh, behind for the goal kick. And just look how Harvey is scurrying now to make every second count for Leeds United. On my watch, just under 25 minutes to go. Pitt getting up again to win a good ball in the air. Madeley. Pitt again winning it in the air. Horsewell half beaten by the referee, in fact. Malone going in hard as well. Now Bremner, as Porterfield went in rather late on him. Giles. And there's an interception by Bobby Kerr. <laughs> Clark's header. Lorimer. Inside for Clark, now with a sight of goal perhaps for Alan Clark. And Horswell turning it back and Montgomery going down and in fact he was kicked by Jones who lost his footing I think and Montgomery sportsman that he is quick to say that that was unintentional by Mick Jones but the referee had uh, blown the whistle and so Sunderland get a free kick Norman Hunter Winning that one in the air, Hunter. Guthrie to Porterfield. And away goes Billy Hughes.
Now it's uh, Watson beating Jones in the air. Kerr turning it away and into touch. The man who I think must run on five-star petrol, he doesn't stop running, he goes and he goes and he goes. I think we had athletics before the start here, and I almost wondered he wasn't running in the 800 metres in that one as well. He seemed to have so much energy, Bobby Kerr. Rini, Bremner. And now it's with Rini. Going past Billy Hughes is Paul Rini. That's another dangerous looking cross there, and Clark is on the end of it, but once more Malone turns it behind. And he really hasn't made a mistake so far, Dick Malone. Everybody thought that uh, the left-hand side of the Leeds attack, with Eddie Gray in particular, might make him look a bit silly. But he has done Sunderland proud this afternoon. It's another corner, though, to Leeds. And a knock away there by the Sunderland defence. Hughes helping it on its way. Montgomery took quite a knock there, too, as he tried to catch it. Watson up once more. And now for Giles. Is this the moment? No, it's not. Bobby Kerr complaining about something to referee Ken Burns. Now there is just 20 minutes to go. Clark. That's a good piece of play by Alan Clark, but I'm wondering, yes, Gray will just get to it. He really has been almost anonymous, Eddie Gray, and everybody thought that he could well be the man to set this cup final going for Leeds. Cherry. Just look how many defenders they've got to plant up now, Leeds United. Now Gray onto the right foot. And uh, Hughes just getting a touch to it. Leeds United's throw. Madeley. Now they've got to get every they've got everybody up, Leeds United now, and Sunderland have got to contain an awful lot of pressure. There's Bremner and Porterfield back over his own head. Still Sunderland hanging on to this one goal lead. Reaney crossing another one in. Clark turning it down for Bremner and Billy Hughes slipping and picking himself up but now it's with Giles for Leeds and another cross into that Sunderland area Cherry right in there and once more it's Richie Pitt winning it and now it's Horswell with Hallam outside him and Hunter struggling to get back but getting back with Madeley and Rini three against three though Horswell good challenge again by young Horswell and Hallam stopped by Harvey Giles That'll fall for Clark, and Clark is on his way now. Across the goal and no goal. Clark wanting a corner out of it and getting a corner. Slipped that Sunderland the defence, and he hasn't done that too often this afternoon. So a corner then, Peter Lorimer taking it for Lees, and they are really piling almost every available white shirt forward now. Sunderland under the hammer. And they get a goal kick. Sunderland leading Leeds United by a goal to nil and 18 minutes to go. And that's the man who scored it. Sure, everybody watching us in Yorkshire today are saying, surely Leeds United, with all this pressure, are going to get an equaliser in these 18 minutes or so that remain. And I'm sure the rest of the country are asking itself, can Sunderland possibly hang on? 
Well, I think it is possible they'll get an equaliser and the match can go to extra time because that Terry Yorath running up and down the line seems to have stiffened the fight in the middle of the, the Leeds team. And they really have got to grips with it and are winning challenges. So, uh, Maidley, who in fact has had his shoe off for something like uh, two or three minutes now and can't afford the time to get it on. Now with his stocking boot, he stops it and with the other one, with his stocking foot, he stops it and with the other one, he turns it back to David Harvey. Oh, well, obviously there's something wrong with the boot as Les Cocker's down there. Cherry. Being harassed and hustled by Horsewell and finally beaten by Horsewell, but Hallam lacks just that little bit of pace at the moment, it seems. He's got his socks around his ankles. That's a sign that, that he is uh, feeling the pace of Wembley. And uh, the whistle is gone. And Hallam, I think it's uh, a touch of cramp. Well, at least uh, Maidley is properly shot now. And Hallam doesn't get uh, the trainer, or at least doesn't need the trainer. But I'm just wondering whether Sunderland's hearts are big enough to withstand this pressure from Leeds United for another quarter of an hour or so. Terry Yorath is now down on the touchline, the substitute who will be coming on in a moment. Giles dinking it back again, and again, the amazing Watson is there. Good ball there to Eddie Gray. It's with Rini, and with Gray again, and another good ball by Eddie Gray. And Tewitt was across there. All his attacking is, is forgotten for the moment because he did a good defensive job there for Sunderland. And Terry Yorath, the Welsh international, coming on. Studs inspected by the linesman, Mr Morrissey from Cheshire. And Eddie Gray, who's had a very disappointing match for Leeds United, is the man who goes off. Yorath, a very fiery Welshman. Really in the Billy Bremner mould, really. And that's a goal kick. Don Revy really knew, I think, that he'd got to do something about strengthening that middle of the field. And uh, Eddie Gray, uh, a passenger, is an unkind word, but on the other hand, he really hasn't been effective in this game. And he's put another man, a strong tackler, a fit young man, in the middle of the field to try and win that battle. And if they win it, they'll get the goal. So it's really stretching Sunderland now to last out for the 90 minutes. And of those 90 minutes, there are now 14 left. Hallam is offside. Hallam going back with the ball, Hunter snatching it from him, making sure that the momentum is kept up for Leeds United. Think about now, the Sunderland legs are really beginning to complain. Yorath, his legs won't, fresh onto this Wembley field. Giles, who will go out searching for the openings all the while. And there's Cherry going in and uh, Montgomery down again very well. A bit of barging going on between uh, Tewitt and Maidley. Maidley is said to be the guilty one. Sunderland get the free kick. Watson is going to take the free kick. He cost Sunderland £100,000 from Rotherham and he was with Notts County before then. That's £100,000 so well spent on the evidence of this one game alone. He's been magnificent. Not so much with that free kick, though. Nodded away by Hunter. Kerr's going to take it. Cleaning the ball on the inside of his shirt. And a throw that finds Tewitt. He dummied Hunter well there, and Maidley cutting it out, though. There's uh, Yorath. Rini. Cross towards Mick Jones. And there's Cherry again. Several times he's made those dangerous looking bursts and has taken up good positions on the corner of that Sunderland penalty area. Put in two or three good headers and a couple of good shots as well. But now it's a throw with Trevor Cherry taking it. 
Malone beating Bremner. And now Hughes being chased by Billy Bremner. Stewart won't get to that one, and Maidley the easiest job in the world turning it back. Twelve minutes now to go. Sunderland now just 12 minutes away from one of the biggest upsets of all in an FA Cup final. What a good ball there to Terry Yorath, though, for Leeds United. And again, Montgomery there, snatching that ball, but it might well have crept inside the far post. Malone. Just a moment to say a word about Paul Madeley. He's played very well in the back of that defence there, and three or four times he's burst up the field and initiated attacks. He's been coolness itself, and that last ball across there to Yorath was a real dream. Giles now four leads to Norman Hunter. And now to Paul Reaney. And again, that white wave of Leeds United players begins to launch itself towards that Sunderland penalty area. There's a beautiful ball from Johnny Giles. If Hunter can keep it in, and he can. Horsfield is the man who is challenging him. And now it's with Billy Bremner. Everybody up now for Leeds United, including Yorath and including Maidley. Lovely little ball forward, chip forward again, that could be very dangerous by Maidley. Malone getting ahead to it, and now Porterfield. And look how Bremner is chasing everywhere. Kerr. So now we stand with exactly ten minutes to go. Sunderland leading by one goal to nil. And now it's with Stewart. One goal now for these red and white stripes, and that really would settle it. Hallam. Hallam. Horsewell. And that cannoned off a Leeds United player, so it's a corner. Mickey Horsewell. Harvey exchanges a word with Reaney and it's bound to be a worried word because we're in the last ten minutes. Big David Watson's up there again for Sunderland. Here comes the corner from Bobby Kerr. Guthrie is in there too, but they were beaten by Hunter. Horswell. Kerr. Straight at Yorath, and now it's with Lorimer. Pitt's header. Ball goes straight to Lorimer, and now to Giles. And now Leeds are piling men forward again. It's with Jones. Pitt trying to challenge him, but without quite the snap that he had earlier on in the game. But there's Hallam taking it off Cherry, and Horswell slipping it for Hughes. Horswell, he too seems to be running a little bit out of steam, the young number four. Tewart, and Tewart has gone past Maidley. Now Tewart, and Maidley, that was a beautiful piece of play. As Tewart was pulling back his foot to have a shot, Maidley just stuck his out and nudged it back to Harvey. And that really was a question of the superior pace of the Leeds United player. They're looking at the moment slightly the fitter side, lasting just a little bit better than Sunderland. But it's with Tewart, and now it's with Porterfield. And now there are eight minutes left. Malone, Porterfield, Hughes, dare not try a back pass. Oh, and he almost gave that away to Cherry as well, and then had to foul him, and so it's a free kick to Leeds. But the pressure on Sunderland, not only the physical pressure that Leeds are putting on him, and it looks as though, yes, Hughes is going to be booked for pulling back Cherry. I think that's because it was premeditated, without a doubt. He knew Cherry had beaten him with that ball, and he just felt he had to stop it. Giles with the free kick, floated again on that far side. Pitt getting ahead to it. Maidley, who has been brilliant, dinking it back once more. And Horswell couldn't lift himself to it. Bremner now. Bremner, a good cross. And Maidley again turning it back. That was another good piece of play by Maidley, but it was Pitt who got it away. 
So the pressure is still enormous on Sunderland. Not as I was saying, not only the physical pressure, but the mental pressure. Each of them knowing now that one mistake by any of them could mean the end of a dream. Cherry again trying to get it in. Horsewell, the ball cannoning awkwardly off him and he had to put it behind for the corner. So you can imagine how these fellows must be feeling. Full of hope and yet with their own worries as well, Sunderland because they mustn't give Leeds anything in the next seven minutes. Montgomery palming it away, and Jones couldn't control it. Porterfield is hard after him, and that gets a little moment of respite for Sunderland. That's how we stand. Just about six minutes left. And this is Giles. Clark, but Horsewell there before him, and now it's the big brave Malone, and now it's with Kerr, who's not stopped running all afternoon. Straight to Rainey. Giles. Guthrie. Rainey adjusted beautifully there to find Norman Hunter. And now Giles. Watson getting behind that one, Clark. Bremner's in there too, and Porterfield wouldn't let him size up the situation for a shot. Certainly they're swift and clinical with their tackling, Sunderland. Horsewell giving himself really more running there than he needed to have done. Hunter coming forward again for Leeds. Hunter putting it onto the left foot or trying to get it onto the left foot for the shot and that is a free kick and this could be very dangerous now for Sunderland. Two yards outside that Sunderland penalty area. Giles and Lorimer who are masterly in this sort of situation. Montgomery desperate for a sight of the ball. That's from behind his goal. shouting that he wants to be able to see it and he'll need to be able to see it five minutes to go Lorimer's shot into the wall and Sunderland get it away again <laughs> Rini inside the last five minutes Yorath going past Hallam who really hasn't got too much now to offer and Montgomery Ducked underneath that one, which might have been a bit dangerous. Let it go behind for the goal kick. Five minutes to go, they are saying on the Sunderland bench, and I'm sure every minute on that bench will seem like an hour. The sun is coming out, and the northeastern voices behind that Sunderland goal are really lifting this stadium. Four minutes now to go. Hunter leads themselves under enormous pressure now. He's found Giles. Malone again, defying all the profits and really playing well. Hallam, Malone. Oh, and he's given that straight to Clark. Jones, Giles. They mustn't lose possession as easily as that, Sunderland, but now Maidley. Watson there again, and Horsewell just touching it on. Rini to Maidley. Three minutes now to go. Yorath on the far side. And again, Jimmy Montgomery there for Sunderland. and Rini. Hallam just lifting it over Rini, and he can't really run after it but he's saying that'll take Leeds a few more seconds to get it back the crowd are lifting this stadium still more there's Hallam a man who's given just about everything he can give as indeed all the Sunderland players have and Leeds are still coming for them Giles with Rini again making one of those good-looking runs on the right 
another cross, and again that man Watson is there, and it's with Hallam, 3-4 of Sunderland against 2 of Leeds, and Tewart now, and if he plays it across, he's got Kerr unmarked, but Maidley, as ever, is back, but Maidley loses it to Kerr, and Tewart is coming in again, and now his side foot there for Hallam, and Hallam again. And a tremendous save by Harvey, and Hallam can't believe it. That was incredible. Well, here it is, coming up now. Harvey really hasn't had that much to do, but he was left stranded here. So many defenders up. There's the first shot. Now comes the second. And up he goes, to his, high and to his left, to get it away. Stewart now for Sunderland. A deep cross. Hallam on the far side, but Maidley is there for Leeds United. On my watch, a minute and a half to go. Lorimer taking it up again for Leeds. Giles. Sunderland are so, so tired now. Bob Stoker was saying, my men are going to go out there and they're going to run and run until they drop. And Sunderland are almost at dropping point. Clark, but Pitt again, a brave challenge in there. Horse will tucked off nicely there by Tewart for Bobby Kerr. Back for Tewart again, and only Maidley is back. Hunter bravely trying to get back. We're inside the last minute. And it's a throw to Sunderland, and that's going to take a few more seconds. Stoko now on the edge of his seat. And still those seconds are dragging on that Sunderland bench. Bobby Kerr, the captain, waiting for the throw for Sunderland. Are Sunderland going to be the first second division side since 1931 to win the cup? One of the greatest upheavals of all time if they do. Giles onto his chest. There's very little injury time, and we're in the last half minute. Clark. And a good challenge there, and a strong one by Guthrie. That'll take a few more seconds. The referee looking hard at the watch again. The bench are telling everybody in the Sunderland side to get back. Pitt, who has been magnificent, gets it away. It's with Hunter. Again, that referee has looked at his watch. Lorimer turning it on towards Jones, and that time Watson. Yoroth back again. Malone is away. And now it falls for Tewart, and they can hardly raise a gallop, except, of course, Kerr. Tewart once more. We are in injury time at the end of the game. And a free kick goes to Sunderland, and it could well be that the seconds that that takes will be all that matter. Hughes. And that's behind for another goal kick. Harvey wants to take it quickly. We have played... 35 seconds of injury time. And Guthrie planting that one where it's safe, up in the Leeds half of the field. Giles. Bob Stoko doesn't know how to contain himself on the bench. He's had a blanket over his knees and off his knees about four times in the last half minute. Malone taking it up again. Well, he's found a bit more energy. Hughes and the referee looking at the watch again. Horsewell. We have got one of the biggest upheavals of all time at Wembley. It seemed that the experts said that there was no way that Sunderland could win, except that it looks as though they're going to. Stewart now to Kerr. A nice little dink on again for Hughes. Kerr again. And that's going to put Harvey under pressure. And no, it's not given. It's a foul by Hallam on Harvey. He has now played nearly two minutes of injury time, and again the bench is urging everybody to go back, and Sunderland have done it! Stoko can't believe it! But Sunderland from the second division, where is he going? Bob Stoko to Jimmy Montgomery, the goalkeeper who's punching and saving, saved the day for Sunderland. The most surprising result that Wembley has probably seen in its 50 years of FA Cup finals. Porterfield, the man who scored it, and Watson, the man who stopped Leeds United from getting an equaliser. The unbelievable has happened at Wembley. And Bobby Kerr being held by Bob Stoker. Kerr, who ran and ran and found energy to run some more. A tremendous result this for Sunderland. And 
with due deference to Leeds United, a tremendous result for football as well. Well, Horswell has given all he can give, and he is on the point of exhaustion. Bob Stoko, the miracle man, who came when Sunderland was struggling near the bottom of the second division only six months ago, has lifted everyone in the northeast and lifted the FA Cup with it. Sunderland from the second division who go up to receive the FA Cup Bobby Kerr and it wouldn't surprise me in the least if he ran up the stairs as well yes there he goes the result to confound everybody but it's Sunderland who will get the cup? The chairman of Sunderland, the Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent. Hurrah, the lads! are only just beginning.
the shot. Norman Hunter wants to be on his own, I'm sure. The moment of sadness, Don Revy getting his team away without the lap of honour. So Sunderland winners of the FA Cup, and it means that not only that, that they bring European football to Roker Park next season. So the fun and the excitement for Sunderland really has only just begun. Don Revy, I would think a shattered man. A lot of things to put together now. But Arthur Cox, the trainer, and Bob Stoker, who really gets the freedom of Wearside now. Sunderland won. And that is the message. 1973 Cup Final winners, Sunderland. reverse those last two figures and they've won it again in 1973 well he's even got a new hat and I've never seen that before it's always the captain that they parade around but today it's the manager Bob Stoker Job for life now. 